Hello and welcome to Red Gaming Tech for your daily dose of your latest gaming news with myself, Amata. Today is the 3rd of November and this time I'm bringing you some news from Google as they have finally announced both the Nexus 5 and Android 4.4 details. Now the Nexus 5 has been leaked, teased and basically just been running wilds on the rumour mill for quite some time but Google has finally made the new successor official and the information that was floating around it does seem like it was fairly accurate. Now the Nexus 5 is already available for purchase on Google Play for $349 for the 16 gig, $399 for the 32 gig and is either in black or white in the US, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, the UK, Australia, Korea and Japan and it will be followed by offline availability which is of course non Google Play in Europe, the Central South Americas, Asia, CIS and the Middle East in mid-November. Now, so we're going to be having a look at the specifications of course for the Nexus 5 just so you can get a, a good view on whether or not you may wish to upgrade. So we've got the SOC which is a system on chip of Qualcomm Snapdragon 800, 4x Crate 400 2.3 GHz, Andrino 330 GPU 450 MHz. The display is 4.95 inches of IPS LCD at full HD 1920x1080. RAM is 2 GB of LPDDR3 800 MHz. Wi Fi is BT 4.0 or 802.11a. Storage is either 16 or 32 as I discussed previously and we have in-out ports of the micro USB 2.0, the standard headphone jack, NFC, slim port and wireless charging. The OS is of course as you might expect Android 4.4 KitKat. In terms of the size of the device, it is 13, well, 137, excuse me, 0.84 times 69.17 times 8.59. Camera is 8 megapixels with OIS and flash, which is the rear-facing camera. And for the front-facing camera, we have 2.1 megapixels in full HD. Now, as I said previously, they did also discuss the new Android 4.4 KitKat. And it does have some new features, which does include an emphasis on optimizations for devices with smaller amounts of RAM, or more specifically, 512 megabytes devices. And there are now tools for developers to detect when they're running applications on devices with low memory and accordingly manage the processes for that camera or device, excuse me. And they've also added support with a printing framework with support for PDF export, Google Cloud Print, and of course, local Wi-Fi printing services, and lower power sensor batching modes, which will help keep the AP in a lower power state longer, and a new step detector and step counter sensor support. And there is, of course, a new SMS provider, which allows third-party applications to deliver and receive SMS messages. WebView has also changed to Chromium from WebKit and it will include a new version of V8 for JavaScript. And for those of you wondering which devices are going to be upgraded to the Android KitKat, Google is going to update the Nexus 4, 7, 10, the Samsung Galaxy S4 and HTC One Google Play Edition devices with an OTA update in the coming weeks. So we are going to be seeing a fair few devices upgraded to this particular OS, which may be good, may be bad, depending on your preferences. I have basically skimmed over the technical information. There's quite a bit of it, as you might imagine. But if you wish to read all of the current information on the Android KitKat OS, then I have included a link in the description to the developers page. So if you wish to go give it a read, then please do go and do that, as there's quite a bit of information that we would kind of not really be of interest to most people but you may be curious to fully arm yourself with information anyway that is me done for this video i hope you've enjoyed it thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time